I'm not going to give you all the answers in this and not going to go through it completely. What I'm going to do is give you an idea of where to go with each question. So first of all, let's read the information we're given um, because that might help us to put some more information on the diagram. So in the diagram, BCF is a straight line. So this line here is a straight line. Um, and DCF is an isosceles triangle. So we could put little dashes on the sides to show that those two sides are equal because it's isosceles. Angle EDG is an interior angle, an exterior angle, sorry, of the pentagon A, B, C, D, E. So that's already marked on. We can see it's an exterior angle, which means that C, D, G must also be a straight line. We need to find the angle marked as X and we need to tick a suitable reason. Well, first of all, I can't see any parallel lines. So there is absolutely no way that this is going to be alternate angles. Remember, we've already been told that there's an isosceles question in the um, question, isosceles triangle in the question. So is X part of the isosceles triangle? Yes, it is. In fact, this other angle over here would be X. So that's the reason we're going to be using. <clears throat> so we can tick that already. It won't be that one either. Because although X is on the same line as 128, they don't fit together. So now we know that we have this triangle, um, CDF. Um, we know the angles inside any triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So that means we've got X and X, which is 2X. Add 128 and we know that's got to equal 180 degrees. And we can solve that equation to find out what X is. Looking at the second part of this question, it tells us that angle DEA equals angle ABC. So DEA is that angle there, and ABC is that angle there. And I'm going to call both of those Y. That's important. Um, and that then wants me to work out the size of the interior angle DEA. So that would basically find out what Y is. Now, as before, remember this is a um, pentagon. So we need to remember that a pentagon has how many angles inside it? It has 540 degrees. Uh, then we need to look at the diagram and what else can we work out? We've, looked, we've got a couple of those given to us. What can we work out? Well... Remember how we said that CDG was a straight line? That means that we can find this angle here, that purple angle. And also it tells us that BCF is a straight line, which means we can find this yellow angle here. So once we've found the purple angle and the yellow angle, we can add up all the angles we know, 125, add the purple, add the yellow, take it away from the total, which is 540, and that would give us 2Y. We only want one Y, so then we'd half it. Uh, question two. We've got some parallel lines. Uh, it's important that we know that they're parallel because they've got arrows on them. Um, it also tells us that we've got some isosceles triangles, but they've marked on the um, equal lines for us, which is very helpful. We need to work out the size of the angle A, B, C. So the angle A, B, C means we start at A. We go down to B and we go across to C. So those two lines make this angle here. And we can see it's going to be 22 because it's in parallel lines and it's on the transversal 22. And the reason would be, well, is it isosceles triangle? Well, not, no, because it's not one of the equal angles. Um, is it angles on a line? No, because we don't know any other angles on that. On angles on this straight line it must be alternate angles. And in fact, if we look, both inside the parallels, one either side of the line. Work out the value of the obtuse angle, ACD. At this point, what I would do is I would just work out as many of the angles as I can. So I know that I've already, um, this would be 22. Uh, all the angles in that triangle must add up to 180. So that, must, that means that those two must add up to 158, which means that they would be... Um, 79 each okay so that's that triangle done now what about this triangle down here well if those were alternate angles then these will be alternate angles which means that this is 20 degrees it's an isosceles triangle so that one's also 20 degrees um and it's a triangle which means it adds up to 180 so that must be 140 degrees i want to find the angle the obtuse angle ACD, so from A 
to see today. There's two angles, one is obtuse and one is reflex. I want to find this one here. I already know, because I've just worked it out, that this part of the angle is 79 and this part of the angle is 140, which means that the yellow side adds up to 219 and then I can work out what the red side must be because they make a full turn, a circle. Okay. And this question is using um, the fact that we've got a regular polygon. Regular is the important word here. Remember that means all of the sides and all of the angles are equal. Now, the first thing we want to do is find the values of x. We've been given the interior and the exterior angle. And it doesn't actually matter that they're part of the polygon. All that matters is that they're on a straight line. And we know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So on the left hand side, we have 10 X on the right hand side, we have X, which gives me 11 X altogether. Then I've got negative 32 and negative eight, which gives me negative 40. And I know that that gives me 180. And I can use that to find out how many sides the polygon has. Um, sorry, no, it's no, I can use that to find out the size of X. X is 20. Okay. How many sides did the polygon have? Now there are two ways to do this. One way involves a um, formula that's easy to get wrong. The other one remembers is it involves a fact that is easy to get right. The fact that's easy to get right is that the exterior angles always add up to 360. So what is the exterior angle of this shape? Well, it's x take away eight, which is 12. So, I know that each exterior angle is 12. How many exterior angles do I need to get 360? 30. So this polygon has 30 sides. Looking at the final question, we've got an isosceles trapezium. Now it's important that it's an isosceles trapezium because what that means is that these two sides are equal and if you could imagine if we extended yeah, we'd get an isosceles triangle. But what that also means is that the top two angles are equal and the bottom two angles are equal. Uh, so we can work out the value of x and y by forming equations. So angle D equals angle C. So 3x add 5 equals 6x take 40. And we can solve those equations by um, removing the smallest amount of x, then adding 40, and then we divide by 3, giving us x is 15. Um, now we know that x is 15, we can use the fact that all four of these add up to 360, or we could use the fact that any pair must add up to 180. I'm going to use the fact, <coughs> excuse me, that a pair add up to 180. Those two angles there. So that gives me 2x and 6x, which is 8x. Add 5y. Take away 40. Equals 180. I know that x is 15. So 8x must be 15 times 8, which is 120. Hundred and twenty take away forty. Means five y is hundred and x. Um, sorry, y would be twenty in this case. 